Okay, so what I basically understand about this weapon going in is that it's the switch axe mixed with sword and shield, and if we've learned anything from those two videos, it's that shit is busted. Incredibly, incredibly busted. So is the charge blade going to be the same? Does the comparison even fit this weapon? Probably not. This is a weapon that showed up first in Generation 4 alongside the Insect Glaive, making it pretty new in terms of weapons to be released in the series. A lot of people expressed that this weapon video would probably be shorter due to this fact, and I'm imagining the same. But there's still a lot of depth and nuance to the Charge Blade to discuss, and even its development between Monster Hunter 4 and 4 Ultimate saw major changes. As I mentioned in the previous videos, I like to take your opinions into consideration when it comes to which weapon I will cover next. I ran a poll for the two most outspoken weapons I saw in the comments, those being Bow and Charge Blade, with Charge Blade winning by a large percentage. I'll either be doing Bow after this or running another poll to see what people are looking for currently. If you want your weapon covered next, be sure to let me know in the comments, and please consider liking and subscribing. I'm still waiting to get my family back from YouTube, Susan has been sending me weird videos of a gun to my kid's head, it's really messed up, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Please, please, please feel free to support me and support my channel. It's really appreciated. In the meantime, I'm Super Rad, and this is the history of the Charge Blade. Introduced in the Japanese exclusive Monster Hunter 4 for the Nintendo 3DS, the Charge Blade, also known as the Charge Axe in Japan, even though you'll only really be using the axe to blow up monsters with finishers, was an interesting inclusion due to its general flair and ridiculousness similar to the Switch Axe from Monster Hunter Tri. It's a weapon that may get compared to Switch Axe or Sword and Shield regularly, but has many unique mechanics to make it not only stand out from the rest of the possible weapon selections, but also make it incredibly effective and satisfying to use. To start off on the basic attack and functionality, there's a draw attack that launches the hunter forward into a slash, and this move can be performed while unsheathed by pressing X plus A at the same time. Pressing the X button while unsheathed performs a traditional slash, and this can be comboed up to three times similar to the sword and shield. Unlike sword and shield, charge blade can perform a sidestep after any of the attacks in this combo for quick repositioning without the long rolling evade animation, making it very useful for moving around around a monster while keeping up time. To briefly mention the shield, the R button allows hunters to block at the cost of stamina and mitigated damage. If attacked while guarding, hunters can cancel out of the end frames of the animation, either with an evade or attack, making it great for countering monster advances. The A button will perform an upward slash and can be held down and charged to perform a double slash attack with super armor. This move can also be followed up with a round slash finisher and the entire charge combo can be repeated indefinitely. Hunters can even sidestep after the initial two slashes and then still follow up with the round slash, making mobility a large factor for this weapon. Players can press R and X at the same time to activate an attack that switches into axe mode, which comes with its own moveset and unique abilities. It's a much slower option, but comes with the benefit of increased damage. Pressing a direction and X at the same time will perform the same morphing attack, but keep the weapon in axe mode. This form has its own dedicated infinite with the X button that will start with a high reaching upward swing, perfect for attacking tall monsters, and finish with a downward slash. Rinse and repeat for easy damage. Alternatively, the player can press the R button during a combo in either form in order to perform a morphing attack that will switch their stances. This can also be done infinitely and allows for easy switching mid combo. Pressing A will perform a quick chopping slash and pressing a again in the combo will perform a large swinging attack with a long animation. The second attack can also be performed after moves like forward slam, adding to its versatility. Now there's a final attack in this combo, and using it will automatically switch from axe mode back to sword mode. The damage and effectiveness of this move and all the moves mapped to the A button in axe mode are dependent on files, which we'll get into shortly, and you'll never really be using it unless you have them charged up and ready to be unleashed. However, it's important to note that many of the moves in sword mode can morph you into axe mode and either perform the second part of the elemental discharge combo or put you right into the finisher. For terminology we'll use throughout the video, the first hit of the A combo is elemental discharge 1, then elemental discharge 2, 
and finally amped elemental discharge for the finisher. So what are files and how do they relate to the weapon and its effectiveness? If you look under the sharpness gauge, you'll notice that there are five identical icons. These are the weapon's files and are used in conjunction with elemental discharge for extra damage. You first need to charge up the files by attacking monsters. As I mentioned previously, attacking with the charge double slash will make this go faster. Soon your files will glow yellow, signaling that it is possible to hold the R button and press A to load three out of five files. This can be charged further from yellow to red, and then when loading, the hunter will get a full five files. You need to be careful when charging, however. If you don't load the built up charge into the files, whether they're full or not, the weapon will overheat and begin to bounce off of the monster while in sword mode. These files come in two categories, impact and elemental. Impact files will offer a damage boost and also perform KO damage while using discharge attacks. The elemental files will offer specific elemental damage depending on the weapon. Elemental files are generally more beneficial when the monster is exceptionally weak to a specific element. If the weakness is mostly on one part of the body, like Yan Garuga, players will generally spam AED, but if they're weak all over, SAED would be a better option. And we'll discuss the SAED inclusion in Monster Hunter 4 U shortly. It's more efficient. Impact files are better for when a monster has hit zones, typically the head, that are particularly weak to raw damage, due to the usually higher raw on an impact charge blade and the benefits of KO damage. Impact files ignore hit zones, making them particularly useful when performing the super amped elemental discharge ability that we're going to go over shortly. Just keep it in the back of your head, I know I'm already talking about it, it's not even in this game yet. Jumping attacks are pretty self-explanatory. You can either perform a normal aerial attack based on which form you are currently in, or perform an aerial morphing attack to switch forms on the fly. There's one final topic to mention within the weapon's inclusion, and that's the mechanic of guard points, which will allow the hunter to automatically guard under specific circumstances. There are multiple moves in the arsenal where, for a brief window of time, the shield will automatically guard an attack. This is different from super armor, which lets you keep attacking while taking damage, and instead will physically block an attack and send the hunter back with the blocking animation. This state would be active at the end of the sword round slash and at the start of the morphing attack from sword to axe. Guard points also have increased guard strength over traditional guards, making them even more beneficial. Now I feel like I've mentioned a lot about this weapon so far. We've discussed its core mechanics when it comes to sword mode and axe mode, the ability to load and charge files, how files work, and the elemental discharge abilities. We've even talked about guard points. On paper it sounds like a lot, especially for the first inclusion of the weapon, but believe it or not, playing the weapon is actually fairly simplistic and these mechanics are pretty bare bones when put to use. So so much so that the weapon received an extensive amount of additions in the 4 Ultimate release. So Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate gets released and Western players finally get to experience what Japanese players already had, but with multiple upgrades. Not only did Ultimate add in new and returning monsters, new weapons, and G-Rank, but it also reworked or built upon some weapons from previous entries, the most obvious and noticeable being Charge Blade. A lot of Western players never would have experienced the original Monster Hunter 4 due to it only being released in Japan, and would never realize that a lot of the features they have come to know and expect from Charge Blade never existed in its original inclusion. Arguably the biggest addition is the ability to charge your shield. When you're about to unleash the final elemental discharge attack, amped elemental discharge, you can instead press the R button to cancel out of the animation, morph back into sword form, and transfer the energy directly into your shield. If done successfully, a new red shield icon will appear to the right of the sharpness gauge. The length of the effect is dependent on how many files you had while activating it. If you have all five filled, the length will be at its longest duration. At some point during the duration, the shield will change from red to yellow to signify it's running out. The first notable effect is that your shield will begin to glow red, and the guarding will become enhanced, similar to Lance. The blocking animation will be shorter, the hunter will barely move backward, and they can begin attacking again incredibly quickly. However, this this is still based on the power of the attack that they are blocking. Some attacks are so strong that they will knock you back regardless of if you're in normal shield state or charge state. The big issue with the charge blade in Monster Hunter 4 was that there was virtually no reason to use the axe mode unless you were specifically using it to finish a combo with the discharge attacks. It was incredibly slow and clunky, and the higher damage didn't really make up for that. So how did Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate try to remedy this? Well, switching into axe mode after charging your shield would cause the entire weapon 
happen to glow and all axe attacks will get a boost to damage, making it much more viable when an opening presents itself. Even better, there's an upgraded elemental discharge finisher known as Ultra Amped Elemental Discharge or Super Amped Elemental Discharge. See, I told you, I told you we would get to it eventually. Just, it took a while. This replaces the normal finisher and will use up all files and kick the hunter out of the charged shield state. It's incredibly powerful and especially useful when using impact files to unload KO damage. If you don't want to use up all of your files and lose your charged state, you can still perform a normal AED by holding back on the analog stick and pressing X as the attack begins. Guard points return and utilizing them when in charged shield mode will automatically file burst, leading to extra damage. Again, especially useful for impact files. On top of that, if your files are charged yellow, you automatically get guard plus one and guard plus two if they're charged red, essentially turning your auto guards into counterattacks if utilized properly. New to this entry is a move called Shield Thrust that functions as a follow-up attack to any of your traditional options while in sword mode. For example, I can press X to start my combo, then follow up with the Shield Thrust, then move into any other combo and Shield Thrust at any point again. This opens up the offensive options and infinites for the charge blade, but the functionality doesn't stop there. Using this move while you're in the red shield charge state will allow you to output file damage while in sword mode, meaning not only do you have an infinite, but you're also outputting high KO damage or elemental damage regularly. You'll mostly be using this to easily enter into AED or SAED as it can immediately combo into them. That's about it for Monster Hunter 4 and 4 Ultimate. But the changes don't stop there. While there may not be many mechanical changes to the base of the weapon in Generations or Generations Ultimate, we should still take a look at the most popular styles and arts used within those entries of the series. Before I discuss styles and arts, it's important to point out some minor mechanical changes to the charge blade from 4U to Generations, mostly just that it's now possible to enter yellow shield charge by pressing X plus A during a shield thrust instead of gaining red. You also don't enter the yellow state when running out of time like you did in 4U. However, this is weaker than your normal red shield charge and from what I understand is almost never used. Quick charge also no longer goes into SAED with AED still being possible, but that's okay because both AED and and SAED received big nerfs. SAED so much so that it's relatively useless and almost never utilized in this game, and for people that are using the charge blade right now, I know that sounds insane, but bear with me. Also, guard points are never really used for counterattacking anymore. Instead, your animation will just continue after the guard connects. So why is SAED never used? Because the most viable style for this weapon is generally Striker, and Striker removes the ability to shield thrust, and therefore the ability to instantly use AED or SAED, in order to provide two things. First, when in the red shield charge state, you'll gain a 20% boost to all axe attacks instead of the 15% boost all other styles receive. I believe this matches up with 4U, which apparently also offered this 20% boost, so overall it was nerfed, but Striker retained the original buff. Next, like all weapons, you get access to three arts that charge faster than if you were utilizing other styles. Generally, the players will fill the first two slots with something like Absolute Readiness and Evasion, and then the only actual charge blade specific art that's worth using is the Ripper Shield ability, which was introduced in Ultimate specifically, so I actually don't know what gen players were doing back then, I assume using one of the other abilities. The Ripper Shield ability is a multi-hit buzzsaw attack that quickly builds up file charge, and allows the hunter to perform a shield charge by pressing the R button after the initial attack. They can then combo out of this as they see fit. It's high damage and leads to full files with the higher tiers, making it one of the best arts to use on this weapon and realistically the only one you're really going to utilize. While I don't plan to go over each style in each art, I can point out that the aerial style actually received a bit of a utility boost between Gen and Gen Ultimate. Originally in Generations first release, the weapon could only perform an SAED in the air, and as pointed out, it's been nerfed so much to the point that you're worse off using it than not. Generations Ultimate fixed this by allowing hunters to use either the AED or SAED when in the air. With all that out of the way, we can finally move on to Generation 5 and see how the charge blade began to change between World, Iceborne, and Monster Hunter Rise. Alright, so what's new in World? 
First of all, there is a new move that allows you to perform a sliding slash by holding a direction with the left analog stick and pressing circle. The hunter will slide in said direction and finish the animation with a slashing attack. The next new move is the condensed elemental slash. While filling or charging files specifically, the hunter can press and hold the triangle button to charge a new slashing attack that crashes downward. Just like the normal charge slash, this can be overcharged, so make sure you time it appropriately. Now the cool thing about this is that your sword stays charged and you'll actually output file damage while it's in this state, and you gain the effects of Mind's Eye. It's absolutely ridiculous. To further buff this weapon, while SAED still eats up all of your stored files, it won't automatically knock you out of the shield charge state, meaning it's only a timed base duration now and you can keep all beneficial effects of the charge until it runs out. This heavily increases damage uptime overall. Sliding attacks are what you'd expect. You can attack out of a slide to perform an aerial slashing maneuver, and you can even forward slash to begin a slide with your weapon out, similar to the sword and shield that I mentioned in my previous video. You can even forward slash into a runnable wall just like the sword and shield, but you don't get a special ability like the Helmbreaker, so I'm not completely sure why you would do that, there's probably a reason. But what about Iceborne? Well, the biggest addition is the Savage Axe Slash. Right before an amped elemental discharge or a super amped elemental discharge, a hunter can press L2 to cancel out of the animation and perform a new move that will buff the axe form significantly. It requires filled files to be used as it will drain them over time, but it makes up for this by turning the axe mode into a walking buzzsaw, similar to the Ripper Shield art from Generations Ultimate. All axe mode attacks now deal extra hits and damage. Elemental discharge attacks will still drain files like normal, and once completely emptied, the new form will deactivate. Obviously, this is most useful when everything the weapon has to offer is activated, so shield charge, axe charge, and full files. It's important to note that the type of file being used determines the time it takes to drain. Elemental files will last longer than impact files overall, and this is more noticeable when using skills like Power Prolonger 3. This move also buffs the axe's motion values, but motion values were already nerfed between World and Iceborne, so while it's beneficial to use Savage Axe, you shouldn't expect insane numbers coming out of World. Like all other weapons, the Charge Blade can perform a Slinger Burst while the weapon is unsheathed. You do this by activating the Slinger after a successful guard, and it can be comboed out of either with a Sword Attack or by shifting immediately into Elemental Discharge 2. Finally, we can move on to Monster Hunter Rise and see what has been reworked, added, or removed. Well, the Savage Axe form that was just added in Iceborne has already been removed from its inclusion in Rise. Again, we know we can swap Silkbind attacks, and there's rumors of custom movesets potentially being possible, so who knows what may show up in the final release. But at the moment, this is all we have to work on. What does this mean? Well, you won't be able to charge the axe anymore, meaning Iceborne players will have to get used to only charging their shield and sword for extra damage. And honestly, other than that, there aren't many noticeable mechanical changes to the weapon. If you knew how to use the weapon in World, you probably won't have any trouble in Rise. I did have it pointed out to me that certain moves may have been adjusted ever so slightly, like the file damage from SAED having lower hitboxes and making it difficult to hit the head of a Rathian, as an example, but it was hard for me to test something like that so I can't completely verify this information. There's a few small changes like not being able to sidestep out of a guard, the upswing move from Axmo now has the ability to be followed up by AED or SAED, and multiple other small changes. Sure, there aren't many additions to the weapon's base mechanics, but there are two Silkbind moves to discuss. We'll start with Morphing Advance, which launches you forward and morphs your weapon from sword form to axe form if not already utilizing the axe form. It has super armor and you can combo out of it, so it seems great for closing distance and keeping the pressure on. Honestly, closing distance is more important than I give it credit. A lot of people pointed out that one of the Sword and Shield Silkbind attacks I didn't understand the utility of was actually very good for this. This move readies you for an AED or SAED, so it's very good at positioning you when all of your files are filled. Next is Counter Peak Performance, which acts as a dedicated guard point maneuver. The crazy thing about this move is that not only do you not take damage, but if a monster hits you, all of your empty files will be filled at once. And on top of that, it only costs one wire bug to utilize, meaning it is very easy to to consistently and repeatedly use this ability to fill up files without the need to combo and charge manually. Luckily, manually charging still has its benefits as it's necessary for sword and shield charging. Since there weren't many additions other than the silkbind maneuvers, that's all I have to say about Rise specifically. Again, remember that this video is released during the demo period of Rise and doesn't have all abilities unlocked for use. I'm looking forward to the full release to see what else is in store for this weapon, but for now, that's all there is to show.
Honestly, going in, I didn't know what to think about the Charge Blade. It's a weapon released in the fourth generation, one of the newest weapons released in Monster Hunter, so I didn't think it would have a lot of mechanical history or changes to go over. While the switch from World to Rise didn't add or remove much, the changes from 4 to 4U alone were simply massive. And a weapon that was actually overly simplistic in 4 turned into an intricate powerhouse that requires hunters to heavily utilize resource management efficiently to be effective with. It's a very engaging weapon and one I highly recommend you give a chance going forward if you haven't tried it already. Anyway, that's all I have for you today in regards to the Charge Blade. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Share it with one or two of your friends, it really goes a long way, and spam Capcom on Twitter and at Monster Hunter on Twitter because they refuse to retweet my videos. Let me know what your favorite weapon is and what weapon you want me to cover next. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.